Do you ever remember not believing in God? I suspect that most of you have probably had about the same experience I've had. I grew up in a home and in a community where God was at least acknowledged by almost everyone I knew. My parents were Christians and put the kingdom first in their lives. And God may or may not have occupied a very prominent pace in your life, but you almost certainly had no doubt of his existence. Tragically, not every young person in this country has the same privileges and opportunities most of us have enjoyed. But believe in God, at least in some kind of God, is still prominent in American views today. Annual polls by reputable research organizations like the Gallup and Barna groups still show that more than 90% of Americans believe in God. Basically, faith in God comes through three avenues, by natural revelation, supernatural revelation, and through God's Son. Natural revelation refers to learning about God through his creation. The psalmist speaks of God's revelation of himself and the world that he has made in Psalm 19 verses 1 and 3, where he says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor knowledge where their voice is not heard. Then the Apostle Paul says in Romans 1 and verse 20, The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The supernatural revelation of God is contained in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. As beautiful and impressive as God's natural revelation is, there is so much about God that we could not know unless he chose to speak to us through his word. Paul says that the things of God no man could know without divine revelation, but God has revealed them, that is, the things of God, unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 8 through 10. Now friends, without this divine revelation, we could know of power and know of divinity, but we could not know God, nor could we know his will for our lives. When we read God's word, we can understand what he wants us to know and what he wants us to do. And not only has God revealed himself in nature and in his inspired word, he has also revealed himself in his son. The Apostle Paul wrote of Christians being redeemed by the precious blood of Christ who was foreordained for our salvation long before the foundation of the world, but was manifest or made known in these last times for us, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 and 19. Now please notice what Peter says about our believing in God through Christ, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, 1 Peter 1 and verse 21. Peter does not deny the influence of Old Testament revelation on men's faith in God. Certainly men and women who have studied the Old Testament knew much about God. But we have a new source of revelation no other people in the history of the world have ever had. We have God's own Son. The Apostle John enlarges upon this thesis taught in 1 Peter 1 and verse 21, where he says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, has declared Him. John 1 and verse 18. The word declared means to explain, to reveal, or to make known. God has been completely revealed in His Son, Jesus. That was the reason that Jesus said to Philip, He who has seen me has seen the Father, John 14 and verse 9. Paul refers to Jesus as the image of the invisible God, Colossians 1 and verse 15. Friends, we believe in God through Jesus Christ. God raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Through Jesus Christ, we have absolute assurance of God's existence and of God's goodness. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. And we pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day.